another edition of the St. Lawrence Coaches Corner. I'm Aaron Todd, and I'm excited to have our Senior Associate Vice President for Athletics, Bob DeRocher, on today's show. Bob, thanks for joining me today. Good morning, Aaron. Thanks for having me. It's always good to meet with you. So, Bob, over the fall, we talked to our coaches. Uh, we talked to a lot of our coaches on this show about how they were coping with the COVID-19 pandemic and working to give our student athletes the best possible experience they could here on campus in the fall. Um, you know, we're now a week into the spring semester, but I'd like to just take a look back on the fall and get your perspective on how things went um, for our student athletes and for our department and for our campus as a whole. Sure. Well, Aaron, you know, it, it obviously would have been been able to, it would have been nice to be able to ha have played some competition, but again, there were so many unknown factors and so many things that we actually needed to put in place to make sure that our student athletes and our coaching staff would do. I mean, above all, what we've, we've, we've tried to consider is, you know, the student athlete safety above anything else. And then from that point on, trying to, to, trying to establish a sense of normalcy as much as possible. But it was, you know, this wasn't something that, you know, that we uh, started just before, you know, two weeks before school to put processes in place. I mean, way back in March, when we didn't come back from spring break, the planning process begun. And it, and it was a lot of trial and error. There was planning and scenarios drawn up that had to be changed. And some of that came from you know, New York State guidelines, New York State restrictions, also working with our local county health department. And also, as you know, the NCAA, um, our resocialization plan was a big part of this planning as well. And again, as, as you've heard all over, nobody had a playbook for this. Nobody had pre-planned ahead of time. We haven't had to deal with something like this you know, in almost 100 years. And, and so um, everyone, it was a learning curve for each one of these areas I've just talked about. So, um, but again, you know, starting out with the safety piece was most important. We certainly, you know, there's a balance between the student safety, because that's one aspect when you're when you're doing things to protect your students and the student athletes, you know, there's sometimes unintended consequences as well, you know, and, and that and that's uh, the difficult balancing piece, right? The other piece of that is obviously trying to do as much as possible as safely as possible for the mental health aspect of it. To try again, that's that sense of normalcy we're trying to to put back in place as quickly as possible. So. You know, we had to just to open our facilities. We had to put in some serious plans about that. You know, way back in March, we established a, a university-wide committee. In fact, a number of committees that met on a daily basis. We met with the and continue to meet with the county health department on a regular basis. So, again, the planning is not done. And um, you know, as you said, as as things have gone gone along, we've learned and we've learned things about the virus, so we've had to make changes as we go as well. Um, you know, as we speak, our athletic trainers and coaches and GAs and administrators are currently spending a lot of time working in Elite House, Head Fieldhouse as we transition from the fall to the spring semester after a very short break here on campus. Um, you know, working the COVID testing uh, areas. Um, there are also a lot of other volunteers across campus. It's not just athletics there. Uh, getting things up and running for the spring is really an all out effort, isn't it? It really is. It's, this is really an all hands on deck. You know, from the beginning, it's been a university wide collection of people working hard, again, to make it as safe as possible for all of our students. And I can't say enough about this department. You know, we, we continue like, like other departments across, uh, across the university, but we continue, we have other jobs to do. You know, we have to continue to recruit, you know, to bring in next year's class, you know, and more importantly, we have to have regular reach out with our student athletes more so than ever when we're out of season, because we're just not seeing him as much because of, you know, this social distancing and, and, you know, as you know, we reduce the population of the university and, and again, trying to <clears throat> minimize the risk for everyone involved. So we're not seeing everybody on a day-to-day -day basis. So we actually need to go above and beyond to make sure we're in good contact with our student athletes. But, you know, as you said, everybody's been involved. The testing has gone well. You know, that was a plan in itself, what companies you could use, 
you know, what we couldn't use. And, uh, you know, we've come up with some, uh, some really good work here in terms of facilitating third party vendors to help us get through this. And again, you know, we have more than one testing going on in terms of, of the actual technique of using PCR tests. We have antigen tests now that, that's going to be really helpful. And for people that don't, know, that don't know much about the antigen tests, they're a 15 minute turnaround. But, you know, there's pros and cons of all these tests. So the combination of having some tests, different tests together, really makes this with the strongest perspective. And Bob, what were some of the lessons that we learned from the fall? in terms of our approach to campus life and athletics with COVID and, and how do you anticipate things will be different for student athletes in the spring semester than they were in the fall? Well, I think some of the things Aaron, that is helpful is we've been through the process of getting our facilities open. And so, and we have an idea of the capacity, we've had to reduce capacity in, in, you know, in the Newell track and field complex, tennis, you know, in our fitness center, strength and conditioning rooms. But we have a good feeling about that capacity and what we had to do to keep things clean to keep the virus away. Um, I'm really happy to say that as, to the best of our knowledge, there was no type of, of, of virus uh, transaction in our athletic facilities. So that's, you know, that's a big plus. And when I say that, I'm not talking just about student athlete areas. I'm talking about our, you know, our community, community use in general, that is the campus community use. So I think you know, we're ahead, we're ahead of the curve in terms of what we have to do to reopen. In fact, to be honest, we, we've really never shut down our facilities. As you know, we've had a fair number of, of students on campus all through the break. And we thought it was really important for them to be able to get out of the rooms, do some exercise, do some activity. So we kept our facilities open the entire time, which we've never done in, in, in the 30 plus years that I've been here. So I'm really pleased that we were able to do that. But I think in terms of other things, you know, some of the things where, where, where we're going to be a little bit of a, you know, ahead of where we were is understanding that re-socialization plan. I think we did a really good job of starting out slowly in small groups. And of course, the reason for that is if you have some type of infection, you're only taking out a smaller portion of a team instead of the closing down the team and the coaching staff and athletic trainers and anybody associated with that team all at one time. Because the other thing we have to be aware of is, is, you know, the number of quarantine beds we have on campus. And so, you know, as you know, we talked as a department from the start that we didn't want athletics to be the, the cause of closing down the entire university because we tried to jump into things too fast. So one of those lessons learned going into this semester, as much as we want to get into this as quickly as possible, we have to be slow. We have to be deliberate and we have to be a, a smart in terms of our approach to getting back into full team practices and then hopefully competition. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, as, as you probably heard, there's, there's, you know, only a few hours away, there's a strain that's even more transmittable. And so again, we have to keep these things in mind as we start back up. But I think as I, you know, as you know, I told the department, if we go slow and steady, use the best caution we can, continue with the five pillars uh, of safety in terms of, you know, social distancing, masking, and, and staying local, and those type of things, we have a best, our best chance to continue to move forward. You mentioned returning to competition and trying to work towards that. We do have, you know, a little bit of experience with that now as our men's hockey team, you know, went through that process. Uh, just last week, they played their first two games of the season. I know from my perspective, it was great to see you know, some some players donning the scarlet and the brown. And of course, it was great to have uh, some nice results with a tie and a win over a nationally ranked program in Quinnipi Quinnipiac. But, um, you know, what were your thoughts on seeing that team, you know, seeing the men's hockey team out in the ice and, and playing once again? Couldn't be happier, you know, and, and obviously I'm in touch with Coach Brex on a regular basis. And, you know, I started to say, you know, nobody is happier to see us play than me. And then I said, well, probably you and the players and then me. So yeah, it's extremely pleased to see the team out there. It was a lot of work behind the scenes on their part, the players' part, you know, everyone that's involved making this state, you know, making this safe. We, we have a, you know, uh, uh, safe monitoring committee that's, that's headed by uh, our vice president of community employee relations, Lisa Kenya and Valerie Lear, a former senior staff uh, member. 
And that committee has, has been instrumental in help us, helping us move forward. There's been a lot of conversation between myself and that committee and particularly the, the co-chairs and trying to make adjustments so we can, can get the, the team back rolling. And, and again, you know, <clears throat> the president has certainly been involved in these conversations. And one of the things I've been talking about from the beginning is, is trying to get the, the hockey team up and running because the EC, ECAC has committed to playing in the league. And we've made that commitment with three other teams to try to play. And, and, <clears throat> and one of the reasons, you know, besides trying to support our division one hockey teams to get this going, I think it's also very helpful to our division three teams, you know, to be able to take one team and, and, and actually get them started. It, it really, you know, it really gave us an idea of what we are doing well and what we need to work on when we prepare to try to get the rest of our winter teams in action. You know, we will have a little bit more of a challenge because as a Liberty League, there was a decision not to go forward as, as a league, but at the same time, we hope there's going to be some schools within that league that will want to have some competition when we get there. But again, you know, having hockey step out and get started and having us follow these protocols will be really, really helpful when we get the other teams going. And, and you know, one more point about that is it was a lot easier to make this work to begin with with one team than trying to see what was going to happen with five or six teams going in a weekend, as you know, traditionally happens during our winter season. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm really pleased about that because it, it could certainly be, you know, a nightmare for us, for the student athletes, coaching staff and the whole university, if we, you know, missed the piece or didn't plan on something that we thought we had covered. And then all of a sudden we had an issue with six teams or five teams at once on any given weekend. So, so not only it was a great just to get hockey back up and started, but it certainly, as I mentioned, is going to be a benefit for all of our Division Three teams when that time comes. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Bob, because I was going to ask you a question about, you know, our Division Three athletes, and and you know, we're a Division Three institution with Division One men's and women's hockey, and and you know, it sounds like you know our philosophy between those programs it really isn't all that different in terms of what we're trying to do. It's just a a situational difference in terms of of what's out there for, for you know, our teams in, in terms of what our leagues have decided to do and, and what, um, you know, what may, may be available for us in terms of opponents. Yeah, and, and that's correct. And one, and one of the things that, that, that does make this a little bit easier and makes it more like our Division Three sports, besides Quinnipiac, who you just mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, the teams, all the rest of the teams in the ECAC that are playing right now are all in New York State. Mm -hmm. All the, all the teams that we've tried to work on um, playing non-conference games with also are all in New York State. So one of the things, regardless whether it's Division Three or it's our Division I team, when we get together and talk about how this is going to work, we all have to have, you know, standard, standard principles we're going to follow, standard guidelines, standard protocols. <clears throat> so we're all testing the same. Not only are we following the NCAA guidelines for, in this case, you know, high, high risk sport, which hockey is, but we're also following guidelines in New York state and, and also working with our local county. And so the nice thing when you're playing and trying to um, participate with, with New York state teams, that makes it a little, a little easier because again, we're following under the New York state guidelines. You know, obviously we're following NCAA protocols the only the only difference where it could could be is in the counties, and, and the only reason I say that is you know one of the things that will be tougher than than it was in the fall is we're starting at a much higher rate now of the virus in this county than we were back in August, mm -hmm. and, and so that's going to be a, you know our most difficult uh, hurdle to overcome for for all of our teams whether it's whether it's our Division One hockey or, or the rest of our Division Three teams. Right with the with with these different counties in our own county, you know, having a, a a higher incidence of the virus right now, and certainly you know a higher incidence nationally for all of our students coming back from various locations. And I know that they've all tested and, and quarantined themselves before arrival, but but it's uh, we're in a very different place as a nation than we were in August, and um, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge going forward. But we're looking forward to facing it for sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it, I think it's really important, and that's why I said you know we need to start out slow with precaution and, and, and good sense because we really need to reestablish our university bubble. You know, and having grown up in Canton, as you you have as well, we know a lot of people in the community. And and back in August, you know, really people were so worried about the students and what the student we're we're going to bring into our community. But you know, I have to compliment the, our our our, our university and the, the other local schools because we've done so much testing. We've, we've made that commitment to trying to make our, all of our students, faculty and staff as safe as possible. And the testing that we have, we're, you know, the safest places in the county right now are on the university campuses because of the precautions we're taking. And it, and it, and it, and it really makes community people that have to, to work with our students feel much safer because they know we're testing on a regular basis but we do you know we do need to re-establish re the bubble and once we have that on our campus we'll have a little bit safer time to proceed with athletics well bob before i let you go the last topic i'd like to bring up is the the black laurentian athlete coalition our department recently held a a month-long fundraiser for the blac and the black laurentian initiative uh, can you talk about what the goal of that fundraiser was and and what will what the money will be supporting and and how else can we continue to support our student athletes of color as we move forward well i think you know i i think one of the things that we need to to always keep in mind is is you know diversity equity and inclusion on the university as a whole and i've been part of that committee uh for a number of years and even way back before we had um you know our associate dean for diversity and inclusion we were talking about that, you know, many years ago, but we still have so much work to do. And um, uh, again, I'm I'm really pleased with our department and the involvement from our from everyone in the department um, about trying to support our student athletes, but the students as a whole. We started working early on um, this past summer. In fact, way back in June, I've met with some people, some of the students on the Black Laurentian Initiative and had some conversations. And, but honestly, our coaches were, were, were really um, stepping to the forefront with all the social injustice going on in the country, thinking, listen, we need to do more. And, and at one point I felt maybe I was a little slow to the, um, to the start line with this, but at the same time, I, I think we, we need to do more than just talk about this, these things. We've seen that happen for many years across the country, an incident happens, we talk about it, we, we, we feel terrible about it, but many times there's little action. So, so my message is, you know, you know, we're trying to think strategically how this is really gonna work. Certainly, you know, we, we feel terrible about what's happened, but when we get involved, we need to be more than allies. We need to be action goers with, with this group and with people across campus to really push the change. Because talking about it is good, but it's just not good enough. It's happened for too many years. So we, we, I think our department is behind this. That's just one piece of, of four other key pieces the Black Laurentian Initiative have brought to us. They actually brought, brought six different items to the university. I think four of them that we can really help with in athletics. And the spinoff of that is, is really you know, looking inside our own house, looking inside this department, say, what are we doing for, you know, our, our students of color? And, and, and so the Black Laurentian Athletic Coalition was a spinoff or a subgroup of the Black Laurentian Initiative. So, the, you know, that, the, the fundraiser is one piece of four of the things that we're trying to work with that group with. And you know, there's a number of different ideas, but we're trying to, uh, again, we're trying to, to make sure that the student, student athletes are helping drive this with us. It's not, you know, the administration, the athletic administration, here's what we need to do, pushing it down to the student athletes. It's not like that at all. We need to hear them. That's why we're involved. They've asked for our help, and we certainly want to do that. So, you know, the, some of the ideas they've brought forward and, and certainly one of the pieces is always gonna be education. Education for our coaches and our department as a whole 
you know, and again, that's things, that's the same type of thing that's happening across campus, but also education for, for our students, maybe our, 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 our students that haven't had a lot of exposure to minority students and, and you know, are afraid what to say or, or how to support. So that education piece for all of us is really important. And then, you know, it would be nice to, I know one of the things uh, the athletes are interested in is, is having some space, you know, is having some space to, to meet and, and, and be able to do some things right in the athletic department. We're actually working on that across campus as well. So, you know, we don't want to be independent of the university, but we do want it to, to really help our student athletes in our own house. But what we, what we want to do is, is, is make change across the whole campus community. But we're going to, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to do what we can inside, inside athletics at the same time. Well, Bob, thank you. I appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the spring semester brings. It's, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but you know, knowing how hard everyone has worked in the fall and seeing already how hard everyone's working to provide our students and our student athletes the best possible uh, semester that we can, I, I, I know that, and I know that our students are gonna rise to the challenge as well. So it's a, it's a, it's, it can be daunting at times, but it's also uplifting um, to see the Laurentians, uh, you know, raise each other up and, and you know, be, be there for each other in these moments. And, and um, you know, uh, we're all looking forward to getting through to the other side, but, uh, but getting through this process together is only gonna make us all stronger. Couldn't agree more, Aaron. And, and again, you know, last shout out for the department. Can't say enough about everyone and the hard work and the care they're giving to our student athletes. And again, our student athletes as well. You know, I, I feel bad because I haven't been able to, to have as much face-to-face -face time, but I certainly have had more Zoom time and more email exchange and text messaging and, and trying to help out as much as I can. And, uh, and again, I think we, we would be remiss as if we didn't give a second shout out to our student athletes, because again, everyone was worried about our students and our student athletes with the spread. And actually, you know, we haven't had very many cases of, of students or student athletes having the virus. So, you know, we, we couldn't have asked for, in terms of the virus, a much better first semester. As you said, it'll certainly be a, a bigger challenge this semester, semester because we're in a different place right now. But again, you know, the saints have always come together and, and that's part of who we are. That's part of the culture that we have. And again, the campus is the faculty have made adjustments I think the students and student athletes are very pleased about how that went in the classroom. Certainly we all want to be face to face. That's who we are. And, and, you know, this is a, you know, I hate to use that cliche, but I do feel like everyone feels like they're family. Everyone knows everyone and, and is trying to be very supportive so we can all get through this. So I appreciate the time this morning, Aaron. I enjoyed talking with you and uh, I want to thank you for all, all you have done to you know, try to promote all this goodwill and, and, and try to showcase the work our student athletes are doing and, and our staff as well. So thank you very much for doing that. Well, thanks, Bob, I appreciate it. I thank you for joining us today. And thanks all of our viewers for tuning in to another edition of the St. Lawrence Coaches Corner. <laughs>